Okay, good afternoon. My name is Dennis McVeigh, Tandem Technologies. I'm here to present how you can use Sage 300 to lend it costs your own way. So uh, let me hit the down arrow. Okay, what I'll show today is using Sage 300 2014, there's hidden inventory columns that have been available all along in your product since 2012 and before, where you can use those to do your own landed costs, to really do it your way, and um, have Sage use those in reports. Uh, what you will, what I will show you is you need to do some things in SQL, um, but they're really simple. Uh, then you can have a database trigger that automatically updates the columns for you. So all this can be done without any real programming in Sage 300 or altering that package, You're using it out of the box, so to speak. Uh, and, and how then we'll you, I'll show you how you can use Sage Intelligence, again, a package you have for Sage, to use to make those landed cost columns and have your inventory have both a, an on-hand quantity and a landed cost quantity without affecting, affecting any general ledger. So you're not changing your financials. That's the key here. Uh, and then, of course, I'm going to use a sample um, order entry report that was done with Crystal using landed reports. But the sky's the limit. Um, so what, what, in order to do this, you, here's some things you need to have. You need to have one version of Sage 300, obviously, 2012, 2014, and 2016. Uh, I have not tested this for 20 Sage 300 C, so I can't speak to that, although it would support it. It's the same back-end database and engine. You will need Sage Intelligence, the connector, the manager, and the reviewer, if you want to tweak and do more things with the um, the landed cost fields and how you use them. However, you can also just use Report Management Viewer. The connector has the fields already. <clears throat> the third thing, if you want to modify reports, you got to have some version of Crystal Reports Professional, either 2008 or 2013, and it's backwards compatible, so it doesn't matter. Um, everybody, am I talking too quickly? Okay, I'll gather that nope. I'm not. Okay, nope, so let's. I'm going to switch now. That's enough of the uh, requirements and background. I'm going to switch and show you exactly what I've done. So what I'll do then, I'll minimize this, and I'll head over. I can dismiss this now. I'm going to head over to our server, <clears throat> and I'm going to show you that I have, say, 300 up. So it's just sample company, Inc., and everybody knows how to log in. So I'm there already, and I'm logged in. <clears throat> I'm using standard inventory, and what I've done is, I want to show you now. Here's the behind the scenes. We're using Sage out of the box, but we're doing it behind the scenes because Sage has put out fields in their databases. And I'm using Sam Inc. I'm going to a table, and the table is called ICLOC. And the fields are there already, so you don't have to do anything to use them. They're already available for you to use. I'm just going to show you those fields. Actually, I can just do a query. Just do a S E L E C T star from I C I L O C and hit execute. If I'm really smart, I'll do item no cost one cost two star. So it says show me those fields first and then ignore the other fields. So here they are. Cost they're cost one and cost two. They're not used. Not anyway in the product. They're just they're just there. So they're available for you to use, including you want to get creative and add more columns, you can. <clears throat> but there's two quest fields that are available to use at any time, as well as the other fields that Sage is maintaining. That's important to know, because what it means then, I can then use those fields to my benefit. And they're, and they're in the item at location file, the file we call IC loc. Uh, if you uh, don't know Sage has a, and let me just digress for one second. Sage has a, where was it? It's on the D drive. Um, the Sage Mile, here it is. And if you don't have this, um, really helpful. I'm going to scroll down to inventory control. So I'm showing now is the directory of the Sage automated uh, model of their database. And I see it just sort. So if you click on the heading I see, it brings up an internet based screen. And I'm going to type in control F. 
type in I C I L O C. I happen to know the file name, but you could say location details and get it as well. Everybody, am I going too quickly? So in this file, you can see that it has the item numbered location. So this file is for every item in the database, for every location warehouse in the database, it has the following fields, including some cost fields. And they're used to define cost fields. So that they're not being used by the product, they're reserved for people to take advantage of. So with that, <clears throat> I'm gonna go back to my SQL. I can see that I've assigned them already. And if you look, I have a little script that you're welcome to use. Uh, here it is. The right one. Here it is. That's the actual script. And I want the other one, which is um, the open. Because I've, I've done a few things since then. So I've got to get the file. Hopefully, oh, save that trigger. All right, here, yeah. So basically, um, you can use an update command, and I've set uh, I've set the the items in my database to say, well, if they're a unit, uh, if the unit cost is each, to make the unit cost number one twenty five cents. If it, if there's a package item, make that item twenty fifty cents. If it's a box item, make it two fifty. And if it's nothing, make it just twenty five. I'll fix it out later. And the same thing for cost two. That means I can use these fields for anything I want them to do and think of duty costs, carrier costs, trucking costs, anything that I would need to add to, to, to that I know it's going to come in that, that I've worked out a cost to my item, but I have no place to put it in Sage. Well, yeah, you do. You have these two fields right here. <clears throat> With that, I've developed a trigger. And again, that's this trigger, what it does is says it's called an insert trigger. That means anytime I add an item to Sage, go do this step again. Go use, uh, go in and use this logic. That means I just change the numbers, to update my trigger, and it, what a trigger is, a trigger is a built-in engine of SQL that Sage 300 doesn't even know about, but you, and Sage 300 uses it themselves, but what it does is every time you add a record to the database, you go into Sage and the inventory item, the trigger fires off, because it's called an insert trigger, and then does what, whatever you tell it to do. In this case, I go to every time I add an item to the item at location database, and that's ICI loc, ICI LOC, ICI T, ICI LOC, here it is, and triggers, and here it is. So every time I add an item to the item database, the item at location database, this trigger will fire and will put in these values for me automatically. So I just work in Sage like I always do. I just go into Sage and I go into my inventory trans uh, inventory item and price list. I go to my location details. I take an item up. Say this item here, item A1-310-0. I hit the insert button. Up, sorry, got to be in the, got to be in the field. There, click in here. I hit the insert button. I pick another location, which of course I hit location five. Hit enter, and then when I hit save, that trigger just fired and put my cost in. And the cost can be anything I work out. So I can sit down and figure out whether it's this item group, or that item group, that prior item class. It add, add this amount to cost one. Add that amount to cost two. Anything I can put in words that allows me to do that. So with that, I just happily go along adding items to my database, and I can even have update triggers. Um, but I have an insert trigger for this demonstration today. And now Sage is maintaining, through the, the power of SQL, my extra costs, cost one and cost two. Okay, so that's great. Now how do I use them? <laughs> so here's, so what we did was, and we've done this, so I took something we did for a customer, and that we set up a report in order entry called sales by salesperson rep. Remember, part of my presentation, I, would I was gonna show you back to here. Let's switch back up one. I'm gonna show you, I showed you the say 300 hidden columns. I've showed you the SQL commands, the, 
to make SQL do its thing, update it at one time, and then a trigger that does it every time you net an item one by one. And now I'm going to show you how to use intelligence reports and how to use a sales report. I have them out of order. I'm going to, I'm going to do the sales report first, and then I'll do the intelligence report. So you have now, you have that data being collected for you and working the way you want. Now you can make, you can make sense of it for your business. So I'll go back to here, over to here. So here's a sales by sales rep report. <clears throat> and what it did was it used that, those database fields and some extra views and now gives me a nice report. So I click on it. Did it click? There it goes. Now it's clicking. Now this report I set up, but you can set up any report. And this is the crystal report part. So this is why you need crystal prof uh, professional. If you want to add columns, take away filters, do more things to this report. But this report set up to allow me to pick a month, December. Remember, I'm in my sample company, so I've got to pick the year 2020. However, in your company, you, you, all the available years are there. So in our sample company, I can see that I have from 2020 down to 2014. In your company, of course, you'll have older years. Uh, now, in my sample company, uh, I can do it from salesperson, SP, from Bill down to Susan. Now, those are all the parameters. Of course, with Crystal, you can set as many parameters as you want. I just set these. So I, cl I click OK, and what it does now, did I hit OK? There we go. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I still didn't hit OK. There it goes. So now what it did was it, gen it went through the database, went through all my items, went through my sales, went through the order entry shipments files, computed the sales for the last year and this year, then added in my extra costs to compute my landed gross margin. So I had my total sales, my landed gross margin, right? There was no sales in February. So I can see in some months there weren't, some months there weren't. So um, I can see each year. So I can see my landed gross margin for each of the years. Rather than my standard, if I did my standard report, I would see my gross margin. And this is my landed based on those extra cost fields being included. So I can see what really what I expect to make as a profit, not what I'm making based on the cost of the item being purchased. And I can do that for each sales rep, right? So that's, that's the beauty of this report. And again, it's just one of many reports. All right, that has shown that crystal report and how we can take that landed cost and put it into action. Let's go to now Sage Intelligence where I can drill down and get even more detail. And again, like with Sage Intelligence, there are many, many reports we can do. So I don't have to do, do sales reports. I can do inventory reports. I can do receivable reports because all those files have that, that item at location file available to me with my cost field available to me. I'm just showing you some examples of things you can do. So what it did was, and just again, I'm going to show you what it did, and use the connector. So this is a tool available uh, with Sage Intelligence. And every company that gets Sage has a Sage view included with your purchase. Uh, the report manager and the connector are additional costs. But I took, because we have our dealer copy, I took the Sage Intelligence, I took the Inventory Master Standard Report, and what I did was I went and added a field, which is a calculated field, called On Hand Landed Inventory Cost. So I said take the On Hand Quantity, times the recent cost, times co plus, co uh, actually it's in parentheses, so it's the recent cost plus cost one plus cost two times the quantity on hand to get my new calculated on hand landed inventory costs. That's my foundation. So I, that's my building blocks where I use Sage Intelligence to make up a new field based on other fields that are there. So I have a calculated field. I can do it same thing for purchase orders. I can do the same thing for sales. I'm just doing it at the inventory master. So I can now give you a report of the cost of your inventory on hand, both real cost 
and your projected landed costs with those using those cost one and cost two fields. So that's my basis why I'm going to show next. So I'm showing what I'm going to do before I do it. I should show the answer, and then the, this will make sense. But let's close this down. And now I'm just going to go to my report view, uh, manager, viewer manager, it doesn't matter. I'll go to reviewer, viewer. I'll scroll down to inventory. So now your, your end users just go here and say, pick that report which I made up. It's based on the original landed report. And when they hit run, as you know, Sage Intelligence takes my data, launches Excel, dumps the data to Excel, and then formats it. So here I am. So now here I have my standard report where I can pick by categories, desks, all categories, just desk executive chairs, right? And it recalculates all the landed cost. I click back to all. I click OK. So I can see here, I've added the column at the end. And the column is and just going to the spreadsheet and adding a column, which is a there in that, that container I showed you before about that calculated landed cost. So it shows me that really I'm buying these items and the cost this item here called the fluorescent desk lamp. Uh, it's costing you $13,797.91, but based on my cost fields, it's really cost me 15768 So now I have a comparison and say, oh, okay, I got more, in, more, more value in stock than I think. And that's just, and again, any, any report then Sage can, uh, that's either in Sage Intelligence or Standard Report, you can add those landed cost fields and they give you real sense of value and numbers that you can judge and run your company with. Because I think it's cost me 13000 Now it's really cost me fifteen. dollars um, I went real quick. <laughs> I, in 15 minutes, I used up an hour's worth of talking. But that's, uh, that is the crust of my presentation. Uh, I'm going to leave it open to questions. Because it's really simple. Um, uh, I'm, so I'm going to leave it open to questions for you. Uh, what's important is the, that you have to have Sage 300 distribution bundle, Sage Intelligence, at least the viewer to run the report, and connector and manager if you want to alter it to get additional um, fields on it, different calculations using for different for inventory for sales or for purchase orders. If you new crystal reports, if you're going to go into Sage 300 itself and take one of your reports, like order entry reports and add a new report that gives you sales by salesman detail, sales by this was a sales by salesperson summary. You could do transaction details list with um, with those cost fields as well. So you get a full feel that you those cost fields if you only added once and set up a trigger to to work with, they now get you can now get to use it and and provide more sales, including sales history. Um, now I do want to point out. I use that the item location files, so no matter when you sell the item, it will use that item at location file cost values. So therefore, this is developing a standard landed cost for your company to use to judge, and you can change them every year, and that, but you can use this to judge how well you're doing sales versus costs each year. Uh, with that, I'll, I'll leave it open to questions. And what I'll do is I'll turn the recording off.